Hello. In this video, let's see how to use the time series mining function in Oracle database to forecast target values within Oracle Analytics. Here's a sample order lines data set with 9000 order lines across three product categories. And this data is spread across four years from January 2012 to December 2015. Let's say I want to use this data and forecast sales for the next six months. How do I do that? There are a few options. We could right click on this viz and add forecast. We can create a calculation with the forecast function. We now have an additional option which is to use the time series mining function in Oracle database from within OEC. Let's see how to do that. I start by creating a data flow. I choose my data set. Since we are going to invoke the database mining function here, the prerequisite is that the input data set should be sourced from either an Oracle database or ADW connection. The time series function is only available from database version 18c onwards. Let me hide the data preview section. I choose database analytics and I select the time series operation. Let me collapse the output section and we'll go through the parameters here. First is the model type. Now there are several model types that you can choose from. Based on the nature of your data set, you can pick the appropriate model type. So let me choose Holt linear model here. Next, what's the target column that I want to forecast on? So I choose sales. I want to forecast for six periods. Time sequence ID, I need to pick a date here. So I say I want to forecast based on order dates. Time interval or the time level that I want to forecast on. Uh, I want to forecast at a month level. What is the aggregation rule to use for forecasting? I leave it as a sum and I choose product category as the partition column. Now there are some additional parameters available here to specify seasonality in your data, how you want to handle missing values in the input data set and so on. You may refer to Oracle database documentation for more details on these parameters. Now here we have an option to generate an additional data set with the time series statistics details. Let's set this to yes and see what happens. Next, let's look at the output section. I mapped only one partition column, so let me uncheck two and three. Let me rename the predicted value. So I say hold here because I've used that as the model type. Okay, that's it. Let me now save this data set. Let me give it a data set name, a table name. I will save this data flow and execute it. Now behind the scenes, what's happening is that BI server invokes time series function in the database by passing the parameters that we've specified. And the database does the forecasting operation. No data is moved out of the database. The, the forecasted values are saved in a database table and an OAC data set is created sourcing from this table. And since we chose to have the time series statistics generated as well, a second data set will be created with an underscore stat as part of its name. Okay, the data flow is completed. Let me go and refresh my data sets. Now I see two new data sets created. This is my output data set with forecast values and this is the one with statistics. Let me open this one with the forecast values. Let me bring in all the columns into a table. I will rearrange them a bit. Okay, so this is the data set with the forecast values. First, we have the model type column, which has the value of the model type we selected. So that was whole linear. Next is the partition column, the time sequence ID, which is at a month grain, the actual and predicted values. If I scroll down, I will see my actual sales data ended in December 2015. And I have the forecast values for six months in 2016 with the lower and upper bound values. I see forecast values for each partition column. Okay, let me remove a few of these columns and plot this as a line chart. Let me add partition as trellis rows. So this is how the actual and forecast values look. Moving on, let's look at the second data set generated by the data flow, which is the time series statistics. Now I have two data sets with statistics, one which was generated by the data flow that I just executed with the Holt model and another data set which was created by a similar data flow, but with the model type being set to ESM. Let me bring them both so I can compare these two model statistics. Now I will bring in all the columns from this table and see what is the information that they're showing me. 
let me remove these empty columns and change this to a pivot. Let me just drag and drop this here. Okay, now this is easier to read. So these are the various model attributes and their values for the different partition columns. And this information is generated by the time series function in the database. We have values for AIC, AICC, BIC and so on. Let me create a similar pivot table for the other model. Okay, using this information, I can now compare the two models generated by the time series function and it helps me decide which one is more appropriate for my data set. Thanks for watching this video.